who won the war? The Union Army obviously won the war in the sense that they were the army left standing and holding their weapons when it was all over. Uh, so the soldiers who fought in the Union Army, the generals who directed it, the president who led the country uh, during it, won the war. If we're not talking just about the series of battles that finished up with the surrender at Appomattox, but talking instead about the struggle to make something higher and better out of the country, then the question gets more complicated. The slaves won the war and they lost the war because they won freedom, that is, the removal of slavery, but they did not win freedom as they understood freedom. I suppose that slavery is merely the, uh, the horrible statutory expression of a deeper, of a deeper rift between people based on race. And that is what we struggle still to, to heal. And uh, I think the, the significance of Lincoln's life and his victory was that, that we will never again enshrine these concepts into law. But now let's see what we can do to erase them from the hearts and minds of, of people. The Civil War is not only the central event of American history, but it's a, a central event in large ways for the world itself. If we believe today in the 20th century, as surely we must, that popular government is the way to go, it is the way for the emancipation of the human spirit, then the Civil War established the fact that a popular government could survive that it could overcome an internal secession movement that could destroy it. So the war becomes, in essence, it becomes a testament for the liberation of the human spirit for all time. Four million Americans had been freed after four years of agony, but the meaning of freedom in American life remained unresolved. The emancipated slaves own nothing, one Tennessee planter wrote, because nothing but freedom has been given them. Thousands of blacks wandered southern roads, searching for relatives or looking for work or food. Thousands more stayed on their plantations as hired hands or sharecroppers. The 13th Amendment was followed by a 14th and a 15th, promising full citizenship and due process for all American men, white and black. But the promises were soon overlooked in the scramble for a new prosperity, and white supremacy was brutally reimposed throughout the old Confederacy. The white South won that war of attrition. It would take another century before blacks gained back the ground for which so many had given their lives. I think what we need to remember most of all is that the Civil War is not over until we today have done our part in fighting it, as well as understanding what happened when the Civil War generation fought it. William Faulkner uh, said once that history is not was, it's is. And what we need to remember about the Civil War is that the Civil War is in the present as well as in the past. The generation that fought the war, the generation that argued over the definition of the war, the generation that had to pay the price in blood, that had to pay the price in blasted hopes and a lost future, also established a standard that will not mean anything until we have finished the work. You can say, there's no such thing as slavery anymore, we're all citizens. But if we're all citizens, then we have a task to do to make sure that that too is not a joke. If some citizens live in houses and others live on the street, the Civil War is still going on. It's still to be fought, and regrettably, it can still be lost. Thank <laughs> you.
Gettysburg's guns are still, and the dead sleep on. America's most famous battleground is a camp again, with a road dividing the blue and gray. There is no other dividing line now, as 2,500 veterans gather from north and south to mark the 75th anniversary of America's Armageddon. Hello, Hello. 